Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use IP adapter to replicate the effect of Photomaker and Instant ID. In my last three videos, I talked about Photomaker and Instant ID. It's a new technology which allows us to use a face as an input and can generate an image using the same face in different poses as well as different styles. Today, I will show you how you can use IP adapter to have the same effect. So we are going to use a face and try to generate a character with the same face in different poses as well as different styles. I hope this video helps those who are not able to install Photomaker or Instant ID in trying to get a similar effect. Before we get started, I would like to say a big thank you to all of you who subscribe to the channel. We have reached the 1000 subscribers milestone. I truly appreciate all of your support guys. Big thank you to all of you. Let's get started. So these are the topics I will be covering today. If you are already familiar with a particular topic, feel free to jump around and skip that particular section. I will be starting with a fresh installation of Comfy UI and I do not have any custom nodes installed. I will show you all the steps required in order to install the custom nodes I will be using. If you already have a particular custom node installed, skip ahead to the next section. Let's start with the first step. For that, we do not require any custom node. We can simply start Comfy UI. Once Comfy UI start, you can simply clear your canvas and click on the load default. Click on OK. Then for the checkpoint, I will be using the analog madness checkpoint. It gives semi-realistic outputs, which is perfect for what we are going to do. You can use any checkpoint, including SD 1.5 checkpoints. For the positive front, I'm going to say a face portrait of a woman. You can also try close up portrait, middle age, photo shoot, looking at the viewer. You don't want to have an image where the character is facing sideways and only half of the base is showing. Of course, you can add other things, but at this stage, you want to keep the prompt simple just to get the face of the character. For the key sampler, I'm just using a fixed seed. If you want to copy it, if you have the same model, you can copy the settings. And then click on Q prompt. This is the result. We have a character looking at the viewer or the camera and most of the face is clearly visible. It's not obstructed by any object. So let's move on to the next step and that's going to be the second category. We are going to take this face as an input, pass it over to IP adapter. We'll then use the face ID model to grab the information from this input image and generate a character with it. Now, if you already know these steps, feel free to jump to the next step. Since I am using a fresh installation of Comfy UI, I do not have the custom nodes. I will show you how to install the custom nodes. If you already have the Comfy UI manager, you can simply go into the Comfy UI manager and search for IP adapter and install IP adapter plus version. For those of you who do not have the custom nodes or you do not have the Comfy UI manager, continue on watching. Go to your search engine and search for Comfy UI manager. And the first link should be from GitHub repository and make sure that the GitHub user is this exact name here. Open the link, then click on the code button here and then click on the copy to clipboard button. If you have Comfy UI still running, you can close out of that terminal. Then open your Comfy UI folder, go into custom node at the top, type in CMD, press enter, and then type in git clone paste the link by pressing control V, press enter. This will clone the Comfy UI manager. And from now on, we are going to use the Comfy UI manager to install custom nodes. Now you can close out of this terminal, go back to your Comfy UI portable folder and then run Comfy UI. It will take some time to download the dependencies for Comfy UI manager to work. Once it's completed, you can go back to your browser and refresh the page. Now you should have manager on your sidebar. Click on manager, go into install custom nodes 
At the top here, we have this search input box. Click on it and type in IP adapter. Press enter to search. Then click on Comfy UI IP adapter plus. This will open the GitHub repository. Scroll a little bit down where you can see installation. Keep on going down, you will see workflows. And for today, we will be using the face ID workbook. Click on example directory, then choose the face ID basic. We are going to start with this one. Now you can click on raw, right click on the page once it's loaded, then click on save as, go into your Comfy UI folder and save it somewhere there. Go back into Comfy UI, click on load, navigate to your Comfy UI installation. Look for the face ID basic.json file and click on open. So at this point, you may get this box telling you that there are a few notes missing. Click on close, click on the manager, click on install missing custom node. It will tell you the node that you will need and then click on install. Once it's completed, it will tell you to restart. Click on restart and it will install the necessary dependencies for Comfy UI IP Adapter Plus. Once it's completed, simply refresh your web UI and make sure that you do not have any red node telling you undefined. Next, we'll need to get the different checkpoint. So the first one is the load checkpoint. This one, I will be using the analog madness. You can use any other checkpoint. Since this is an SD 1.5 model, when I go into the IP adapter model, I will have to use an IP adapter face ID SD 1.5 version. In order to get the models, you can go into manager, install models. At the top, you can type in adapter, and then you will have the models here. Now I will install this version, IP adapter face ID SD 1.5. Simply click on the install button on the right side. Next, I will also need the LoRa. And in this workflow, it tells us that if you are using the SD 1.5 IP adapter face ID, you will need the SD 1.5 LoRa. So we can simply go back into manager, install model, search for IP adapter, and look for that exact name, which is this one, IP adapter face ID sd 1.5 lora.save tensor click on install next will require a clip vision model so simply go to the top type in click click on search and look for the one that says vith not the g1 if you are using sdxl then you would download the other version the one that says bg next in the load image click on choose file to upload go into your comfy ui output folder and select the output from the previous step. Now for this test, I'm going to leave everything as default. I will also keep the seed as one. I'm going to change the steps to 20 for this model. If you are using a different model and they require 30 steps or less steps, you can change the number of steps then. I'm, I'm going to change the sampler and the schedule up to match the model that I'm using. Next, I will click on QPROMP and wait for an output. Now, some of you may get this error that says no module name inside face. When using the IP adapter face ID, it requires the inside face module to be installed. So simply go to manager, install custom node at the top, search for IP adapter once again. And now click on the name where it says comfy UI underscore IP adapter underscore plus. This will open the GitHub repository. Scroll down until you see face ID. Click on installation instructions. This will scroll you down to the installation section. Scroll down until you see this line where it says face ID requires inside face. And then there is a check this issue for help. Click on this issue. This will open an issue log in GitHub repository. Go down a little bit. You have to scroll quite a bit for this one until you see a post like this. And it will be by the developer of IP adapter plus. Then to look for the line where it says alternatively, you can download the pre-compiled version. Click on here. This will open another GitHub repository. You need to check your Python version. Open your Comfy UI Windows Portable folder at the top CMD, enter, and then type in Python underscore embedded. 
on Windows, we'll have to use backslash, but if you're using a different operating system, you may have changed the backslash to a forward slash. Then type in python.exe. Again, this is Windows, dash dash version. It will tell you your Python version. I am using Python 3.11. Go back into the GitHub repository and download the version for you. In my case, CP 3.11. Click on the file and then click on this download button here. I will save it in my Comfy UI Windows Portable folder. Back to the terminal. I'm going to do Python embedded backslash python.exe dash m pip install and then name of that file. Press enter. It will start downloading additional dependencies and it will install inside face. Once you see successful, go back into the terminal and this time type in Again, your Python embedded Python dash M pip install, and then type in this name, Onyx Runtime. Now there's also a GPU version available for this. I found out that I get errors when I use the GPU version. So I'm going to install the CPU version instead. Once it's done, simply restart Comfy UI and try to generate the image once again. Now for this note, make sure that you're using the correct provider either CPU or GPU, depending on the Onyx runtime that you install. Okay, so the generation completed. And if we take a look at the input image and the output image, we can see that it's the same person. Or at least from far, we can see it is the same person. Now I've done a couple of generation just to make sure that I'm getting a good result. So I've tried with a different sampler name and the different scheduler. This is the result. Then I've tried changing the empty latent image to a portrait since the photo composition is a portrait. And then I've also used the VAE, which is included in the analog madness model and plug that in directly into the VAE decode. And this is the result. Now you may have to do more testing. I've only done four and I was able to get a good result. But depending on the model that you're using, you may have to do more iteration in order to get a good result. Now in my case, this is good enough. If it's not for you, then you can experiment by changing the weight, the noise, usually adding the noise, bring the composition, the overall composition of the image closer together and be more coherent. If you decrease the weight, you will see that the final output will not look exactly as the input image. Sometimes you may have to do that in order to get a good output image. You can also play it around with the start and end at steps this is called time stepping and you can start generating the face and then at the end maybe the last 20 percent you let the model do whatever you want it to do now right now i've been using the face id version one but you can also experiment with the face id in version two which gives better result now for the sake of the video i will be using this image for the third step which is trying to get these results. So we have one input image in different styles. If you want to have a closer look to this image, you can go to my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. And under recent posts, this is like a free blog I have. And as you can see, I am not logged in and I can still look at the video or read the post. All of that is free. We'll also be posting the workflows that I'm using in today's video over here. So you can look at the different images, compare it and see which one gives you the best result. Okay, so let's move on to the next step, which is to introduce control net. Control net will give us more control over the output image and we can control the pose, face, movement, the body shot as well. Right now, all we've done is we've taken a face. This can be a real person or it can be like we've done generated person. And then we've generated an output image in a different setting. This one has flowers in the background as well as a different pose. So you can see a different shot here. If this is all that you wanted to do, congratulations. You have everything you need in order to generate these type of images. You can now start experimenting by changing your checkpoint. 
you can change your positive or negative pump, change the aspect ratio to get different type of shot, change the key sampler settings, and that also will influence the output image, as well as the IP adapter section. Now, for those of you who want to get that extra control over your output image, we'll go and start with the control net section of today's workflow. Again, let's go into the manager, install custom node. This time at the top, type in control net and click on search. If you do not get anything like in my case, you may need to change the filter here from install to all, and then you will get the correct list. Now, what we are looking for is this one, auxiliary preprocessors. Now, simply click on install. Once it's completed and you see restart, click on restart. In your terminal output, you will see that it will start downloading some additional dependencies. Just wait for it to complete. Now, once control net has installed, you will see import times and you should see control net loaded as a custom node. If you have any errors, it will show as import failed here. Then you will have to check if you have the correct control net installed. So go back into manager and try to install it again. Now verify if control net was installed correctly by right clicking add node and make sure you have control net preprocessors and that you're able to add any of the node. For example, the line extractor, we have the canny edge detector and this one will take an image. So we can take the image from our previous generation, pass it over to canny edge and from the canny edge node, we can drag the image out into a preview image, press on Q. And once the control net, the canny edge completes, you will see an output similar to this where the canny edge detector, it basically detects all the lines depending on the threshold that we've selected here and it will display it here. And we can use these lines as a reference in order to generate another image, but following these lines. Now there are different type of control net preprocessors. So if we go back into add node, right click add node control net preprocessors. Another popular one is under the normal and depth estimators. And the latest model we got is the depth anything model. And this one will basically take an image and output a depth map for that image. So we'll be able to get the 3D effect from this depth map. By the way, once you add the node here, the canny edge depth map or any of the other control net preprocessors, the first time you click on QProp, it will take slightly longer to download the model. In this case, the depth anything, it will download the depth anything model. So in this case, you can see here, it's downloading the model and the depth anything is about 1.34 gigabytes. Okay. And once it's completed, you should see something like this. And you can see anything that is closer to the camera is white. Anything that is in the background really far, it's going to be black. Anything in the middle will have a shade of gray. And this is how we can tell the model that we want something in the foreground or something in the background. So for today's workflow, I will show you these two preprocessors. However, once you understand the concept, feel free to experiment with the other preprocessors as well. There's a lot, you can try each one of them at your own pace. Okay, so if we look at our workflow so far, we have the model, the load checkpoint model, and Usually this model will go directly into key sampler, but when we are adding IP adapter, this IP adapter section goes in between the model and the key sampler. So we can see the routing from the model. It goes over to IP adapter section and it goes back into the key sampler. When working with control net, we will go from the positive up here into control net. And then from control net, we'll go into the positive of the key sampler. Let's start building the workflow. I'm going to make some spaces in between here. So in between the positive prompt and the key sampler, I will double click on an empty blank space and type in control net and select the apply control net node. This node will take a conditioning 
the control net model as well as an image and it will output a conditioning. So the output, we can simply take this conditioning and put it in the positive prop of the key sampler. This is fairly easy. Then the conditioning at the top will be the positive prop. The control net model will take it, drag out, release and select control net loader. If you just install control net, you may not have the model. Let's go into manager. This time click on install models. At the top here, you can type in control net, press enter. And the list will give you all the control net models we can use. If you are using an SDXL base model, then look for the base here that says SDXL. And in order to follow along, you want to select the canning and depth model. Simply go on the right side and click on the install button. For me, since I am using the analog madness model, which is an SD 1.5 model, I've installed the SD 1.5 version of canning and depth model. So you can see here, install. Once it's installed, you don't have to restart for this one. Simply click on refresh and it will be available in your drop down here. So let's start with the Kani Edge model. Simply select it. And you can see that this control net is going into control net for the apply control net node. Okay, so I'm going to make some space here because the name is a little bit long. So we go from load checkpoint to positive prompt to the apply control net. And in between, we, we just have a node that is loading the control net model. Now we have one more input in the apply control net, and that is the image. This image, it's not this final image that we have. If we are using the canny model, this image will have to be the output from the canny edge preprocessor node. So to clean up the workflow, I'm going to delete this section, and then I will add the canny edge preprocessor Make sure that you are adding the Canny Edge preprocessor one and not the normal Canny one. You can also find it by clicking Add Node, going to Control Net preprocessor, Line Extractor, and selecting Canny Edge from there. So the output of this Canny Edge will go into the Control Net. The input one, you can drag out, select a load image, and then just choose your input image. In my case, I'm going to use this as the input image. I want to keep the same shot, so the same perspective, but I want to change the style to a different one. So this one is from Instant ID, and we want to have a similar effect. So you can click on Choose File to Upload. Go into your Comfy UI installation, Comfy UI, Output, and select the image from your Output folder. You can also right-click on the save image node, click on copy clip space, and then go into the load image, right click and paste from the clip space. Okay, now, since we want a different style, one option is to change the checkpoint. Let's say you want something anime-like, you can select a model that is, can give you anime-like style, or you can keep the same checkpoint and you can change the positive one. So for the first test, I'm going to change the positive prompt, and then I'm going to experiment with different models and show you the result. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, this is my input image, the first generation just using the face ID, and this one was adding the control and the depth map. This one is decreasing the face ID a little bit and decreasing the control and a little bit. And then I changed the model into an anime model, and this is the result. Now for the second row, I have the base ID as one. And the only thing that I change is the model. So right now I am using an anime model and I've also changed the prop. By changing the prop, I can influence the overall composition. Now for this one, I've decreased the base ID weight and again, more in the last example. Now I've also done another example using a different base, and you can see the result here in different stars. Let's do a quick recap. This section is pretty much standard. You will start with a low checkpoint, go into your positive, negative, and you have your empty latent image. 
Then since we want to have a similar face, we'll go from the model into an IP adapter section. In here, you can use the face ID model in order to get the correct face. And the output of the IP adapter goes into the key sampler as a model. The next part is going from the positive prompt into the control net section. The control net section is going to give us the overall composition of the image. And that conditioning will go in to the key sampler as a positive prompt. Then the rest of the workflow can be anything that you want. So right now I only have one single key sampler, which is being decoded and saved. And you can go into and upscaler workflow, a different key sampler with a different model as well, just to influence the final output. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I will see you in the next one.